and I want to start by just doing a brief reading, a brief thought, just to get your minds into gear for what we're going to present tonight, okay? Is that all right? All right, it's going to be found in Exodus. Exodus chapter 15, verse starting at verse 22. Let's just begin with a word of prayer. Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity to open your word and to learn these simple truths. May you bless us as we study these diseases that have come upon this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Exodus 15. Who has that? Does anyone have their Bible? Okay, starting at verse 22, it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. What do you do when you have no water? How long can you live without water? About three days. So you can imagine some grumpy people, right? Three days. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it is called Marah, or bitterness. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? We would say the same thing, right? What shall we drink? Okay. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast into the water, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. What happens when the Lord begins to prove us? What happens when that testing time comes upon us? It doesn't feel very good, all right? So there he proved them and said, If thou, this is very important, listen very closely. If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments. Do we give ear to his commandments? Okay. Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the? The Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. In looking at the condition of our nation now, in looking at the condition of the world, what are we seeing? We're seeing sickness, we're seeing death, we're seeing diseases. What is the cause? Sin. That's the only cause of it, right? Lifestyle. You, you guys are trying to jump ahead, aren't you? You're trying to jump ahead a little bit. But we see the condition of our world, and it is deplorable. The health of our nation, this country, is taking going downward. The health of the world is going downward. What can we do? Let's start looking into some things that we can, we can do, all right? Now, the presentation this evening is called diabesity. Diabesity. Say that with me. Diabetes. Diabetes. Now, when you think about that word, what do you think? Diabetes. Diabetes, Diabetes and obesity, right? Very, very simple. Now, is there any correlation between these two diseases, these two conditions? There is. Some of you might be nurses in here, huh? <laughs> there is a correlation. Now, is it a genetic relationship? So let's say, okay, my parents were diabetic, my parents were obese, so that means I will be a diabetic, uh, I will be obese. Is that true? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> okay. Genetics play an important role in the development of diseases, but our genes don't actually cause the disease to take place, right? We're predisposed, in a sense, to developing particular diseases. If you're predisposed, does that mean you have to get it? Okay? In our bodies right now, even sitting down here, listen closely to me, right? In our bodies, there are at least, every day, about 10,000 free radicals floating around in our bodies. At least 10,000, right? Depending on your lifestyle. Now, those free radicals can contribute to cancer and other diseases, but we don't get it. Why? Our body fights against it. So we have this mechanism in place to preserve us, right? To preserve us, right? The immune system is there to preserve us. So the genetics contribute to disease, but genetics don't cause a particular disease. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Very good, very good. Now, look at what Inspired Council says in regards to disease. Inspired Council tells us this. Far too little thought is given to the causes underlying the mortality, 
the disease or morbidity and degeneracy that exists today in most civilized and favored lands. The human race is deteriorating. After 6,000 years of sin, it's taking a toll on us. Okay? It's taking a very big toll on us, but there are things that we can do. Right or wrong? Right. You know, where there are choices that we can make so that our lives don't have to be negatively affected by the conditions that exist now, right? Very good. Continuing. Look at this second quote here. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundations here. Have you ever heard this? Oh, I think I'm getting sick. What happens? The person gets sick. It's just started with a thought. You know, or you hear some, some scary news. Or you think, wow, that's probably going to happen to me. What happens? It happens to you. Okay? <laughs> the power of the mind. This, this, this war that's going on with sin between good and evil, it is a battle for the mind. If you can control the mind, you can control the, indi the person, the individual, and you can control what happens in that individual. Don't you want to be under control of Christ? Yeah. Amen. Let's, let us strive to do that, right? Now, diabetes. If someone walks up to you on the street and asks you, okay, what's diabetes? What do you say? According to Mayo Clinic, diabetes refers to a group of diseases that affect how your body uses blood glucose. Okay? Insulin is involved, but it's a group of diseases that affect the metabolism of glucose. And glucose is called blood sugar. Okay? Did you have your sugar this morning? How does one know if they're a diabetic or not? How do you know? What test can you do to, to find out if you're a diabetic? Blood glucose test, right? There are various tests that you can look into to find out, okay, Am I borderline diabetic or where I am, where am I, right? The A1C is the, the most accurate level you know, to test whether the person is diabetic or not. Now, to diagnose a diabetic, if the person has a hemoglobin A1C level greater than 6.5, they're diabetic. We've had people come into the clinic and their A1C is above 7. It's above 8. And I turn to annex. And I turn to Doc, and I just shake my head. The person, and they're fine. They're walking around. They're fine. They're happy. They're great. And I, we're just looking at them. This is a ticking time bomb. People don't know because they're not educated to know that that's dangerous. Okay, but we know that that's dangerous, and we want to change that, right? Now, let's look at some statistics by the CDC. Where am I getting my sources from? It's not me, right? I'm not giving you my information. This is information that's available to you. You can just go, you can search it, you find it for yourself, okay? Look at what happened to the rates of diabetes starting in 1980 up until about 2011. What's happening here? Look at what happened in 1980 to about 1995. What happened? It stayed almost the same but then from about 1995 to 2011, what happened? What is going on? It just went like that. Instead of going like this, we got a steep curve. High prevalence, high incidence of these, this condition, diabetes. Now, are there any complications? We're going to get to some of those a little later on, right? Tell me this. How often... In this country, how often is a new diabetic diagnosed? Every three to five minutes. Anyone else? Any other takers? Quickly. Three to five minutes. Anyone else? Every 50 seconds, a new diabetic is diagnosed. So is something happening to our nation, yes or no? Is there a problem? Is there a solution to it? Yes. All right, let's start getting towards that, right? Let's look briefly at the cost of diabetes. How much do you think we're paying for the results of, as Dr. Ross was mentioning, preventable diseases? 
And in this case, diabetes. How much do you think we're paying? According to who? Who says this? No? The American Diabetic Association, right? These are statistics, statistics from 2011, but they were updated March of this year. So March of 2013. These are the statistics here. This is how much we are paying for one disease. I, that's, I said nothing about cancer. I said nothing about heart disease. I said nothing about stroke. All I said, diabetes. $245 billion. Now, this is up from 2007. In 2007, it was $174 billion. So in a five-year period, there was an increase of about 41% in the cost of diabetes. That's about $71 billion more in five years. Do you think we're going to be on a steady rise now? Is the healthcare system working for us? It's time to do something about it, right? Look at this also. Diabetes is a primary reason for one-third of physician visits and nearly 40% of hospital outpatient visits. Are these numbers startling? How do we know if we have diabetes or not? You saw the numbers earlier. You can speak with your physician. Get checked. Make sure you know, am I borderline? What can I do? We're going to find out soon, OK? So what are some of the complications of diabetes? Blindness. She can't answer no more. Next person. <laughs> yeah, OK, you're OK. Heart disease. OK, Liz. Heart disease and stroke, high blood pressure, kidney failure, blindness, nervous system damage. You hear a lot about diabetics having neuropathy, OK? All right, amputations, losing limbs, okay? What else? Mood and memory changes, premature death, and shortened life expectancy. My grandmother, bless her heart, is 89 years old, but she has diabetes. And as of last week, she was in the hospital because she contracted pneumonia. Now, how do you think that happened? What happened? Her immune system, her body is compromised. So it makes it a lot easier for her to contract illnesses. This is what diabetes does to an individual. It suppresses the immune system, basically, making it a lot easier for diseases to take place. So we want to make sure that we get this checked out, right? Very briefly, we've all heard about type 1 diabetes. What's type 1? Juvenile onset. We've all heard about diabetes type 2, diabetes, the adult onset diabetes. Now, I want to throw a monkey out there. This one, not this one, gestational diabetes as well. But this is the monkey. How many of you have heard of diabetes 1.5? Show your hands. What's diabetes 1.5? What is it? It's a combination, what the research is showing now, that there's a combination of diabetes type 2 and diabetes type 1. So after someone has had adult onset diabetes, you know, the, the pancreas is working, right? The pancreas is working, it's working, it's working, and it's working, but its work is not being appreciated by the body cells, basically, right? Because the insulin isn't being used as efficiently as it can then what's happening? The pancreas is wearing out. After the pancreas starts to wear out, what happens? The blood sugar stays high, but then what? The insulin production starts to go down. So you're seeing, we're, we're starting to see where we're having this, this mesh, this combination of actually type 2 diabetes and at the same time type 1 diabetes in adults. Okay? to be very, very careful. Another one that you may not even think about. How many of you have heard of Alzheimer's disease? There's research out now 
and it's more research needs to be done, but what is being what is being shown is that diabetes type 3 or Alzheimer's disease might actually be a type of diabetes. Diabetes involves the metabolism of glucose, right? And if it's a metabolism disorder, now we're finding that this happens with the brain. Okay, if the brain can't metabolize glucose, it needs glucose, right? All your cells need glucose, but the brain in particular, if it can't metabolize glucose, then you start to see all these signs, all these symptoms that are indicative of what we call Alzheimer's disease. So I want you to look, I want you to look this up, okay? I want you to look up these things and see what you find. Yes, sir, very briefly. Huntington's. No, we can get to that later, right? We can get to that later. Okay, good. Very good. And the same thing here again. Type 3 diabetes. Now, obesity. I'm stepping on some toes. I'm stepping on my own toes. It's not your toes I'm stepping. I'm stepping on my toes. Now, obesity. Is this a big problem in our nation? What does it mean to be obese or overweight? Okay, it means to be at least 25 pounds over your ideal body weight. Now, what are we seeing in society? What is taking place? What is happening to our nation? We're putting on more and more and more weight. And what is happening? Is there a correlation between the weight of our nation, what is taking place in our country, and diabetes? Is there a correlation? What's the correlation? Let's look very briefly at something that happened, some, some statistics, right? I, I actually wanted to keep these statistics because they were from, from previous. Now look at this, what happened? In 2004, look at the rates of obesity and the rates of diabetes. The darker areas are more prominent, right? More prevalent, higher incidence in those areas. Now look at what happened, very, look very closely, in just three years. How many years? How many? Just three years. Look at what happened. Three years later, look what happened. Where we saw an, a rapid increase in obesity, we also saw a rapid increase in diabetes. Have you heard about anyone getting liposuction? Okay, someone has they've de de developed diabetes, they have all this extra weight, and the doctor tells them, you need to get rid of the weight. So they have liposuction, and what happens to the diabetes? It's gone. It goes right away after they lose all that weight. Okay? But there are other ways that we can lose that weight, right? More naturally. Obesity is the most powerful factor for type 2 diabetes development. What's the most powerful factor? Okay. Now, look at what the National Institute of Diabetes and Diagnostic and Kidney Diseases says. Look at these statistics, right? I like to read things from these individuals because it's not my information. It's what the government is saying, okay? Look here for me. More than two in three adults are considered to be? That's more than 66% of this country is considered to be overweight or obese. More than one in three adults are considered to be obese. More than one in 20 adults are considered to be extremely obese. About one third of children and adolescents aged six to 19 are considered so it's not just a problem with adults anymore. Where is it happening now? In the children. This is the first generation where the parents will outlive the children because the children are getting diseases that only the parents and the older ones used to get. Okay? More than one in six children and adolescents aged six to 19 are considered obese. Is this frightening? Is this startling you? Is this alarming you? Okay, it's not meant to alarm you, it's just meant to put it out there. This is the information, what can we do with it? What will we do with it, right? Okay, let's look at how big this risk is. The lifetime risk of someone developing diabetes based on their weight, right? This is not meant to be funny. It is very serious. Look at this. If someone is underweight, they have a 7% 
chance of developing diabetes in their lifetime, okay? If they are 15%, okay, what's the lifetime risk? If they're, if they're normal weight, it's 15%, that's the risk, right? What about if they're overweight? What's the risk? See, it. let's write there. Can you see it? Okay, okay, 26%. If they're obese, okay, above BMI above 30, okay, it's 44%. If they're very obese, above 40, of your B, the BMI above 40, if they're very obese, the lifetime risk is 57% likelihood that a person gets diabetes. What do you think happens if you go to the opposite direction? If that person starts losing all that weight? If that person goes to somewhere that they can get help and not just get a pill, or see this commercial on television say, take, do this diet, and this is gonna work for you. Question, do diets work? Now tell me how. They work in a short time. So, when you go on a diet, what do you lose? You lose a lot of water, okay? What else? You lose muscle. You lose muscle and some fat. So now after that person comes off of that diet, what happens? They start to binge. Like, okay, I'm f forget this. I don't need to do this diet no more. So then what happens? The muscle is gone, but the fat cells are still there. We're all born with a particular number of fat cells in our body. And the fat cells, can, the number can increase, but the number doesn't decrease. When you lose weight, the size of the fat cell becomes smaller. So the fat cells are still there. That's why if you want to maintain a good weight, it's a lifelong process. The cells, the size of the cells can change, but the number doesn't change. It can get more, but it doesn't get less. Okay? So we want to work on lifestyle, making those right choices throughout our lives, making those healthy, healthy eating, right? Not just healthy eating, physical activity. Simple things like this, these big government agencies are saying, this is, this is all the people need to do. Why not show the people how to do it? Okay, there are lots of programs, lots of interventions for this purpose, but our people don't know about them, right? Okay, and closing up here, are we fixing the problem? Are we fixing the problem? Let's imagine... Imagine, you know, Brother McClure, that you run into a room because you see some water on the floor. And you run into that room, and the first thing that you do is you grab your mopping bucket and you start mopping up the floor. Right? That's the first instinct, right? Okay, there's water on the floor. Run in, start mopping it up. Get rid of the problem, right? So now, what happens? Does that water go away? Why not? He did not go to the source of the problem, stop the source, so that the symptom can go away. You know, a lot of individuals will say that in our society, we treat the symptoms. I have a headache, take an aspirin. Go, the headache goes away, right? Was it aspirin or the water? I'll leave that alone. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> so here are some practical things that we can do to help combat both diabetes and obesity. We want to make sure that we're eating more of a wholesome diet. Everyone focuses on, on the diet, right? Everything you see on the television is diet and exercise. That's all you see. But aren't there eight laws of health? What happened to the other six? And even to throw this in, as, as we were talking with Dr. Ross, the attitude aspect as well. What about fresh air? Why would our bodies be made in such a way that every cell in our body is within one millimeter of a blood supply? Every cell. Why would it be that our bodies can convert cholesterol in the skin into an inactive form of vitamin D, which can be turned into an active form of vitamin D in the liver? 
Why would we meet in that way? What about getting sufficient water? Uh, Dr. Ross has his water. I got mine right here. Right here. Oh, boy, it's getting warm. <laughs> okay? Get your water. Air. Water. Rest. Oh, boy. We just push and push and push and push. And it's, I'm not talking about sleeping. Everyone sleeps. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about resting. Just taking that time to say, come aside and just rest. Okay, what about those things? Do you hear about those things in the, in the, in the, in the, in the television? You can, you can take this pill, you can fall asleep. Right? We have to, Ambien, there you go. And when you get on it, what happens? You're addicted. Okay? And then as we learn in the spirit of prophecy, these things call for stronger and stronger and stronger drugs. Okay? So we have to be very careful as God's people what we put into our body. So here's, here's what a high fiber diet can do for you. Prevents constipation. It lowers the cholesterol. It prevents, it helps your, to prevent high blood sugar, right? Prevents diabetes. Here against certain prostate, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, these cancers, right? It helps to prevent obesity. All of these things, you see these two conditions, the diabetes, the obesity, how they're so well connected? Not just the eating, but we're going to look at some more things here as well, right? Let's go over here. How to reduce diabetes. See if you can see all the laws of health as we go through this, right? It's not posted up there, but see if you can pick out the laws of health, okay? Regular exercise in the open air and sunshine. How many laws? Three laws of health right there. Sunshine, air, and exercise. Okay, eat unrefined plant-based diet. Which law? Nutrition, right? Low in fat, but high in fiber because you know the fat contributes to not only weight gain, but coronary artery disease as well, you know, heart disease. Make weight control a habit, okay? When you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You pray, okay? You pray, and then you get about your daily activities, right? Every morning, you can kind of, you have an idea of exactly, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Basically, the same routine. It takes 21 days to make a habit, seven days to break a habit. So if we get into the habit of doing good things, making good choices, then we're a bit more on the, on the path to health, okay? Drink plenty of? Good. Get adequate? Avoid stimulants such as coffee, alcohol, and tobacco. Now, here's a little substitute for coffee. If you have a friend that, you, that loves to drink coffee, right? They just have to have the coffee in the morning with, or else they can't get up. Here's a quick substitute. You tell them as they take their shower in the morning, this is what you do. Potent. Very potent, right? As they take their shower, when they're coming to the end of the shower, they have it nice and warm, nice and hot, right? You like that hot water, right? Okay, this is what you do. Kindly turn that water over to cold. Okay, for about 30 seconds. You do this back and forth. Three minutes hot. 30 seconds cold, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Do that three times. And if that person doesn't have more energy than that coffee, something's wrong with them. <laughs> very natural, very safe. No harm to the body. No harm to the body, okay? Turn your stress over, over to God who only can handle it. Okay, we have to build not only the, 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 the horizontal relationships, which are important, we have to build that vertical relationship as well with our heavenly creator, okay?